Hello and welcome to Finding Respect in the Chaos. I'm Cynthia Lee Sinclair and I'm so glad that you've joined us here on Think Tech Hawaii. This is an important show today. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. It is also Child Abuse Awareness Month. This is an important month to remember all of the things that we can do as a public, right? As a people, to reach out to survivors of assault, survivors of abuse. We can believe them. We can help them have an ear. We can help them know that they're not alone. And this show is all about that. It's all about showing survivors and people that are still victims that there is hope and healing on the other side of the abuse. And there is other people out there loving you, helping you, helping you get safe. I am here with Sasa. Sasha, I'm so worried about saying your last I name am. right. Did I say your first name right? Uh, sorry, excuse me. Um, Georgettis, yes. Sasha Georgettis. Yes. Thank you so much for coming, yes. Sasha. I yes. really appreciate it. We met at a show called the Me Too Monologues. And a few um, shows back, Maisa Thera was on, and we saw a little bit of that. And how amazing what you guys have done and how brave and courageous you are to come Thank out you. and share your stories. And I know you have um, a history of abuse that kind of goes way back to when you were young. And I'm really grateful that you have come to share your story with us now. And um, the audience is here, <laughs> and I know they're going to really be moved by your story. If you wouldn't mind, um, let's start out with a little clip from your, the beginning of one of your stories. Yes. That is, um, we have a little clip. We, first, I think we have a, a slide of... Um, of you, yes, there yep. you are on stage. And then um, the Me Too Monologues is a, a collection of stories, right? All true stories? Yes, yes. Okay, and this one is the your story, right? I think the clip that I have of you is going to be the beginning of your story, Yes, right? that's right. Uh, it is the, the very beginning of my, my, one of my first sexual assaults. So yes. All right, if we could roll that video, that would be great. Thanks. I don't blame you. Not anymore, anyways. I forgave you years ago, but I forgave you for all the wrong reasons. I forgave you because I blamed myself for being out so late at night. I blamed myself for trying to be brave and stand up for myself. I blamed myself for being stupid enough to get in your car. But getting rights from strangers wasn't out of the norm for us Okies, was it? We believed we could see the good in one another. I didn't want to blame myself. And for the longest time, I genuinely believed I wasn't. But when I would feel body weight on top of mine, it would make my stomach churn. And if I wasn't in the driver's seat, I would dig my nails into the passenger side door. You changed everything that night in October. And I left myself there in that empty field. I left myself there when I had to decide if it was more important to preserve my body from you or make it home alive. When. Welcome back. I'm sorry. That was such a powerful video that it, it just took me a minute to recover from it. I, um, I just can't even tell you how impressed I am with your courage. Thank you. And if you would maybe even share a few more details about that yeah, incident with yeah. us, if you wouldn't mind. For sure. Um, well, originally I'm from Oklahoma. That's where I was born, born and raised. So um, at 19 at the time, I was kind of what they call along the wrong you know, side of the neighborhood, wrong side of the tracks. I um, was trying to walk home 
was what was happening. And a man pulled over and asked me if I wanted a ride. Uh, I initially had told him no several times because I didn't feel comfortable. I just didn't think it was a good idea. Eventually, I just, I gave in, you know, he just right. wore me down. So uh, we, he said he was taking me home. We started going that way and we were actually coming close to the apartments that I was staying at at the time. And um, we passed them and I looked at him and I said, or I looked at him and he goes, do you think I'm not gonna take you home? And I said, no, I, I don't. And he pulled literally into the gas station next to it. So my apartments were here, he pulled in right next, like right next door. And instead of letting me out, he turned back around onto the road and just drove around till he found an empty field. So once he found that empty field, um, you know, I had to make a conscious decision. What was more important to me at that time? Was it more important for me to, to not be sexually assaulted and, and fight and more than likely be killed? Or was it more, you know, did I want to make it home? And obviously I made the decision of I, I want to make it home. So um, I eventually convinced him to take me home. Wow. Yeah. I can't imagine how horrifying that had to be for you. How long did this whole thing take? How long did he have you for? Oh, you know, a few hours. Wow. Yeah, it was, um, it felt like a lifetime. I bet. Yeah. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So your whole world changed in that moment. Yeah, everything shifted within that, that moment of, and I describe it in that monologue too, of when I'm standing outside of his SUV, I look to my right and I can see all these lights and these stars. And I knew like, I knew if I ran, he would kill me. But I knew he would catch me and I knew he would kill me. And so the rest of my life shifted in that moment. Right. Um, I, I became a completely different person after that. Uh, after the assault, I convinced him to let me smoke a cigarette in his car because I wanted to leave behind my DNA. I convinced Very him. Very smart. Yeah. Wow. That's <laughs> really thinking and keeping your head and your wits about you. That's yeah. amazing that I you was, were able to do that. I was super concerned that if I didn't make it home, um, I wanted my family to find my body. That's all I could think about was I wanted them to have closure and I wanted him to go to jail. So I wow. even um, convinced him to let me use his cell phone to call my mom to leave her a voicemail. Wow. So it was, like I said, everything changed for me in that moment. Sure. Yeah. I'm so glad you did make it home. Thank you. So it kind of changed the trajectory of your life in that moment, right? Yes. So next you ended up leaving Oklahoma, right? And going into the Navy? Yes. Wow, talk about changing your stars. That's, like, that's a big change. Yeah, yeah. And it's not exactly a woman-friendly environment, right? No, not at, not at yeah. all. Um, and I was a gas turbine mechanic, so I worked, like, in engine rooms with the boys, you know. Oh, my gosh. Wait, wait. We have a, we have a picture of you in the engine room yeah. with the boys. That's quite, an, that's quite a feat. Yeah. Oh, that's my gosh. one of my favorite gosh. pictures. So how long were you in the Navy for? I was in for four years. Four years. Yeah, That's four time, years, right? active duty, did a deployment. Um, we actually sailed the ship from the mainland down here. That's how I ended up here. Okay. Um, so yeah, I was, there. I was there for a while. A lot of time at sea. So tell us about some of the things that happened while you were at sea in this sort of, you're the only woman basically on an all-male ship right um well there was other there was other women and different oh, okay. departments yeah but at one time i was the only female within the engineering department oh okay so Sorry. you had that's fine i just don't want i want no, them, no, yeah. me. <laughs> me if i say something I wrong absolutely definitely want them to like have their their respect because they they went through it too it's actually very common for women to go through the things that i went through right. which goes into an even you know better segue to what happened was uh sexual harassment was kind of rampant in a sense of it was okay, and if you complained about it, you were going to be punished for complaining. So it's all your fault. Well, like what, um, was it, is it Senator or Represent, Represent, Senator McSally, Yeah, right? Senator McSally. Senator yeah. McSally just came out, um, which was a pretty bold, brave move. Extremely. Which helps other people and, that have been victims in, in the military. Yes. It's a, it's a huge thing, because, I mean, the things that I, some of the things that I went through we're small on a larger scale. Not saying that the events are small, but on the larger scale of what I went through, right. they were smaller, such as just 
continuously being sexually harassed, you know, just people talking about my body, talking about the way that I walked, focusing, you know, just on things that didn't matter in retrospect of, of my job. Right. But it also went to to higher events or escalation events. I was sexually assaulted twice while I was in. Oh, wow. And uh, that was, that in itself was a nightmare. Trying to handle that was a nightmare. Sure, because you're still stuck there with these same people yes. on this same boat. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And was it just other sailors or was it um, commanders or your these, officers? Or? My incidents were just with other sailors. Um, they were a higher ranking than me, not to the sense of being a commander or anything. But that's not to say that it doesn't happen with right. these higher ranking officials because it does. Um, actually, someone was sharing a story with me earlier saying that it had happened to a friend of theirs by a higher, a higher ranking commander. So it's so common. Right. And that's unfortunate because when I came forward after I was assaulted the first time, thankfully in that situation, I was not raped. It was just, you know, what would be defined as a misdemeanor. But it was just an, just an assault. You just know? an assault. Just an assault. Just an assault. Yeah. yeah. Somehow it seems to me that these things should not be misdemeanors anymore. Right. They need to be full on criminal charges and then maybe we'll make some headway in stopping them. Exactly. Or at least slowing them down. If guys are going to think, well, I'll get it as a slap on the wrist. Who cares? Yeah. They, and that's the keep thing. Doing it. Well, especially in the military is you do get a slap on the wrist. Ugh. So when I came forward and I, and I told what had happened to me, that this was a, something that I had complained about previously was my barracks room door did not shut. You had to physically like slam the door shut, whereas it was supposed to be like a hotel room door, right? You know, where it just clicks and locks. Well, I'm in my early twenties. We were out drinking. I come back with an an ex boyfriend of mine. Mm -hmm. The door isn't shut. We're not thinking about the door being shut, and I'm right. not concerned. I feel like someone's with me. I should be safe. Right. And I woke up, and it was a friend of mine who was just touching me inappropriately. He had his mouth on inappropriate like body parts with his Aww. hand in between my leg, and I just Aww. shoved him to the ground, and I panicked, and I, I didn't know what to do. And so right. I finally, you know, went and, and did the medical thing, just to try to get a few days off. That in itself was a nightmare trying to get my command to even let me take time off, even just for a week, because I worked with this person within our same department. He was an engineer as well. Oh, no. We worked together daily. We saw each other all the time. and. They didn't want to let me have the time off. And so when I was trying to explain what happened, their response was, he's a good sailor. Do you really want to ruin his career? Oh, my. And how many times has another victim heard that phrase of he's a good guy? You don't want to ruin his career. So Excuse me. Yeah. Good people don't do those kinds of things. So exactly. he's not a good sailor. Exactly. Oh. And that is the, the disregard that's kind of shown. And so when it came to my second assault, which I, I unfortunately don't remember oh. because I, I would believe that I was drugged. And, that, and the story that I tell is not something that I should be proud of, but I was a female engineer. I could drink with the men. That was part of surviving. Right. Sure. Yeah. And that, and that atmosphere was you had to right. be one of the boys. Sure. And so when I went to this individual's house to stay the night, um, I had one drink and I was like, oh, I don't really... I'm, Maybe one more, that's it. I wanted to go to the gym or something the next day. Not even a third of the way through the second drink, I was dizzy. I was feeling sick. Oh, yeah, you got drunk. Yeah, and I was just like, <laughs> I'm going to go lay down. And so I went and I laid down, and I don't remember anything else. I wake up the next morning. He's oh. in the bed with me, and he's telling me what happened the night before. Oh, my. And at that point, you know, I'm just like, okay. What, okay, like, what do you do? Yeah, you know, and GHB is such a scary thing because it is tasteless, mm -hmm. it is odorless. All it takes is a little bit of powder in your drink, and within an hour or so, you are out cold and you remember nothing. Now, this is one of the things I don't understand, is how you guys get off with somebody who's laying there like a big, limp, they're How could that possibly be alluring in any way? And it's got to be so twisted in a guy's head. And some of the guys that do this are like good looking guys. They yeah. just must be like ruined inside somehow. Something. That they think that's sexy somehow, that that's an okay thing. And then it takes sex from being sex to 
to being just a control freak power grab. Yes. And then it's no yes. longer even sex anyway. It's just all about control and power. And that's all it's ever been with any sex assault right. is, is power and control. And, and within my first assault, I saw that so much because he loved the ability to not let me go. Uh -huh. That he had complete control over the situation right. was what he wanted, and that's what he got. And it seemed just after each incident was that's what they wanted sure. was control because the the other two, all of them, all three of my assailants, I had said no. I had turned them down multiple times, even with my kidnapper. He had asked me, and I had said no. Right. And then with my the other two, we were friends when I the other one I was dating, but I had still said no. no. Right. And that <sighs> was what was done in return to me continuously saying no. Wow. I know that you have some friends, um, some pictures of some friends also. Yes. Um, maybe we could see some of those. There you yes. go. There's that group. And these are all your buddies, oh, right? Oh, yes. I love these guys. Love yeah. them so much. So, you know, it's that camaraderie is so wonderful and so powerful. And then when one of them, you know, betrays that camaraderie, I think it's so important for the military to start standing up and saying no more. Right. It's like, when is that going to happen? I, we know that Me Too movement mm -hmm. has started that movement in the world, and it needs to go into the military yes. also. And um, I, I think it's so important that well, you come from a military family, right? I do. I do. So we have a picture of you and your dad, too, I think, right? Yes. Yes, yes, there he is. That's such a great picture. <laughs> you look so proud, and he looks so proud of you. Oh yeah. Now that he's Navy, also or no, he was yeah. Army. Army. I was going to say that doesn't yeah. look like a Navy uniform. No, no, he oh. was Army National Guard. He he surprised me. He wasn't even supposed to show up to my boot camp graduation. He Aww. was overseas in Afghanistan. So when oh, he wow. showed up, yeah. I, oh, what a wonderful yeah. surprise that had yes. to be for so, him to come. It was. So that's why that wow. picture, I'm just like, I'm so happy. I'm yeah. so happy in that one. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I love that. So now that must have been before, um, uh, before any of the assaults even happened, yes. right? That was boot camp. Wow. Yeah. Did your parents and your family know about what happened to you when you were 19? Yes. Um, I went to court and had him prosecuted. So went through the whole judicial system with my kidnapper when I was 19. He was sentenced to 20 years. Uh -huh. um, gets out here in a few, unfortunately. Oh, bummer. Yeah, huge bummer. Um, makes you kind of wonder why you went through it. But I try to think of all the people that I hopefully saved within that you 20 years. You know, in that 20 years, man, you saved a lot of people by yeah. being brave and courageous like you are now. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Okay, we've got to take a little break. Okay. I hope everyone out there will stay with us because we've got more and it even gets better. And I don't mean more juicy stories or anything <laughs> like that. Um, we're not about creating victimization here. But we've got some really good hope and hero because to me you're like a hero. Thank you. And some really important stories. So stay with us, please. Aloha. I'm Gwen Harris, the host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of the supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. <laughs> Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Welcome back to Finding Respect in the Chaos on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and I am here 
With Sasha Jordanis? No. Georgettis. Georgettis. Oh, gosh. I don't know why I have such a hard time with your last name. It's a hard name. I'm not, I'm not the only one who has no, that problem. Right? not at all. Yeah, Thank not you. at all. It makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> um, your story is so powerful, and I'm so grateful that you've come to, to share it. And I love the way you move from all of these things that have happened to you, um, and you come back and you decide you're going to go to school. Right. Yes. And while you are pursuing a bachelor's in criminal justice and psychology. Yes, ma'am. And did you do those at the same time? Yes, ma'am. Wow. Concurrently. <laughs> yeah. I can't even imagine. <laughs> oh, my gosh. OK. And so while you were in school, you went to Peru for a healing, a healing, um, a healing ceremony. OK. Is what they they called it. It was nine days that I went to Peru. Uh, we there was ayahuasca ceremonies. Which, ayahuasca. Yes, that was the word I was looking for. Thank you. Is a the traditional plant medicine in Peru. The tribes have used it for the beginning of time. Um, supposed to be extremely beneficial for uh, people with PTSD. And it's been proven these sort of uh, more natural drugs have been proven to be, you know, a decrease in PTSD symptoms. For a lot of veterans, the MAPS organization does a lot of it. Right. But uh, my experience was, it was amazing. It came at a really important moment in my life. When I showed right. up to Peru, my, my mother had actually passed the same oh, day. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Yeah. And it was one of those moments where I didn't know if I was going to stay or go. And mm -hmm. I just remembered how my mom had always let me be me. Uh, you know, she always supported. Good job, Mom. Yeah, she <laughs> was always like, she's the wild one. Just let her get it out of her system. Right. And so I stayed and had amazing ceremonies that opened up what I wanted to do when I came back. How I was, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to advocate for sexual assault, but I wasn't sure how or where or what tactic to go about it. And being there made me realize how important community was. Right. Uh, just how the people that I met there, I love them to death. Like their family to me, we may, ne we may never talk again, but they were there through that right. time. And it made me realize how important it was for me to come back and start building a community. So you stayed on, you got your bachelor's yes. in psychology and criminal justice. Yes. But that wasn't enough for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> you needed to do more. Yes. So tell us about um, where all that healing stuff led you and, and what it sort of snowballed oh, into and what you're doing now because yeah. it's very important. Yeah, that kind of that, that one, those nine days in Peru just snowballed <laughs> into this huge, huge life change for me eventually. Uh, so I, right now I'm currently pursuing my master's in social work with a veteran concentration. Explain what a veteran's concentration means. It just means that we study more on how veterans are once they process out, how we interact with uh, one another, interact with civilians, the best way that we can help veterans as social workers. Right. Because okay. veterans come from a very different thing that a very small amount of people will, will only go through. You know, right. you're spending this time with your people 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365. Right. And then when your time's over, they just boot you out. Ooh, and right. yeah, there's a huge adjustment period that is so hard to go through. And it leaves a lot of veterans. Sure. That's where a lot of the veteran suicides come from. Is this right? Ooh. Not to mention if you've been in combat, you've got all this yes. PTSD stuff. So even if you haven't been in combat, you still have this whole, I'm lost. Where do I go now? Yes. You're sort of alone, right? Yes. Like a lot of survivors feel yes. alone. Very alone. And, and that's why it's so important for people like you that are brave and just to come out and share your story so people know that they are not alone. Thank you. Thank you. And that's been a huge motivator for me, too. When I came back, um, I started to get more involved in the Me Too monologues. So that was a huge thing for me was to be like, I I'm in it to win it this time. Like, I'm going to I'm out there and I'm you're going to hear my story Good for you. Um, so that was one of them. I actually started a podcast to discuss veteran issues. So nice. uh, it's called House of Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. We actually... Say that again because I want everybody to make okay. sure they hear that so they can go and find it. <laughs> it is House of Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Okay. We actually released an episode today talking about military sexual trauma. So, oh, wow. Yeah, these two things for me coincide. Today's a great day for me. I'm loving it. <laughs> it's perfect. Out here changing the world. Yes, Big girl. The best ways that I can. <laughs> so that, that was a huge thing. Um, and then working, ultimately, I want to go to law school. That is my, mm. my final, final thing. I, I promise I'll be done with school after that. That's what I keep telling myself. Because I actually want to make 
big changes to policy. I want to change the way oh. military sexual training is done in the military. Right. What's what's it like now? What are they? What's the it's, kind of training did people get now? It's a joke. Um, you sit like for us, we would sit on the mess decks for an hour once a year to watch a video, um, and then maybe talk briefly with with personnel that we work with day to day. They're just advocates that take over this the spot, like they're sappers, and they take over that spot for that advocate on our ship or at your command. Okay. But you're still reporting to people that you know that right. are at the same command. And the training right now is just not being done the way that it should be because there's very minimal uh, research done on how training needs to be done as well as the effects of sexual assaults after. Right. Uh, it's hard. It's really hard to get people to want to change their sure. minds. But it needs to be done. The training that needs to be done should be over like a college course, five weeks, one day a week. Okay. And yes. then, then it goes from something you're just being told right. to something that's very real. Right. And there's a better comprehension of it. Sure. And maybe even change the focus so it's not just how do the victims survive this stuff, but how do we stop the men from right. even doing it to begin with? Yes. That they learn this more respectful behavior. And I'm a firm believer in train them young, right? Yes. That way you don't have to worry about retraining them when they get older. But if we could start, you know, instigating programs in grammar schools, in high schools, and there are some, especially here in Hawaii, there yes. are some. We got the Respect Campaign, and we've got a couple other campaigns that are so important because they go out and they're teaching young people how to be more respectful. Um, girls too, how to respect their own bodies, um, how to set limits in um, safer, more mature ways, and I think that's what it's going to take. Because until we train the next generation, yes. I think it's kind of too late to retrain the generation yes. that's already out there. I mean, I mean, we might, I might be wrong. We can hope. Yeah, right? you we can, can hope, hope, but it's and we not can likely. do our best to work hard for right. it, right? Right. And that's what you're doing. I am. And and I'm, I, you know, I know we have less than a minute, and I I wish I had some, I don't know some word that would really express my gratitude to you and how much I admire you for having the courage to come out and, and talk to us, talk to the audience, um, to let them know they're not alone and that there's somebody out there who's going to change the world. Yes. So keep going, girl. Thank You're you. You're awesome. Thank, thank you for you. being there. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. This is Finding Respect in the Chaos. I'm Cynthia Sinclair on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't Forget to come back again.